Hello friends, A Talking Sock here. Now normally I've been in the habit of posting reactions I have to Nintendo Directs and maybe even doing a discussion on them afterward, but this year in particular has kind of been wearing me out on the whole, you know, on the whole premise. I mean in years past, before I was a YouTuber, I used to think that that'd be a fun thing to do regularly back when Nintendo Directs actually meant something, but the ones we've been getting are mostly fodder. I feel like I've said more than a mouthful over the past year, and I feel like doing a reaction or doing a thought slash discussion video on this latest one... We got Among Us, there are some games that are servicing very specific niches. Hip and modern indie titles are still being supported by Nintendo, some are being exclusives, it's whatever, it's whatever, it's really just whatever. If any indie games get announced and they particularly strike me, like to the point where I feel like I want to talk about it, I'll talk about it. But. That just hasn't happened so far. That being said, this isn't the worst Nintendo Direct we've gotten this year, this isn't the lousiest, it's not the best, it's not even the most mediocre I don't feel. And that got me thinking, how would I rank it compared to the other Directs we've had this year? Then I thought to myself, how many did we have this year? Turns out a lot more than we give Nintendo credit for. Granted, they're mostly fodder, but they're Nintendo Directs nonetheless. So let's go down the list from January to December, and make note of every Nintendo Direct, and rank them on a tier list. First off, on January 9th, we got a Pokémon Direct that revealed that we'd be getting a remake of Mystery Dungeon for... 60 bucks. Meh. Along with a couple other smaller Pokémon announcements, like the Sword and Shield DLC and whatever. Not a great Direct, but I do remember feeling second-hand hype for the fact that it was, you know, Mystery Dungeon, and so many people love that game, that series. I even had a friend in college, oh gosh, I was in college this year. But yeah, they were a diehard fan and they were not happy with how the game turned out. But that's beside the point. It's the announcement that counts, not the end product. I'd put this one in the B tier. Better than bad, but not that great. On January 16th, we had a Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Direct. A dedicated one, to round out the first Fighters Pass. There was a lot of hype going into it. People were expecting all sorts of different characters. The only hint we had to go on was Mr. Sakurai holding out three fingers like that. It was revealed that our last fighter would be Byleth from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Not a very exciting character. The Fire Emblem franchise is... I mean, I don't want to say it's niche, but it's niche. It's not... If people consider Metroid a niche franchise, then Fire Emblem is a very niche franchise, okay? That's all I'm gonna say on the matter. I won't go into the logistics of Byleth all here, but suffice it to say, it was overall disappointing, especially for, you know, what people had drummed up in their minds. But that being said, we did get the announcement of Fighters Pass 2 and that it would have six other characters, so that kind of made up for it. Oh, and I think that's where the Cuphead me comes from as well, so, eh, there you go. I'm gonna put that one in B tier too. I'd put it in C tier, but the Fighters Pass 2 announcement nudges it up. On February 20th, we got an Animal Crossing New Horizons Direct that I did not watch. Animal Crossing just, for me, it's not that hype. For millions of other people, and a lot, like, more, many, more millions than ever before, you know, as of recently, would absolutely disagree with me, but that's, it's, it's where I am. I, I'm, I'm right in the middle with it. I'll put it in C tier. March 17th, we got the Spring 2020 Nindies Showcase. I do not remember this one. Okay, so I guess it had like Super Liminal and Gungeon 2 and a Cyanide and Happiness game. I, I vaguely remember this. I, I actually did watch it. Didn't get very excited for, I guess, obvious reasons in hindsight. Yeah, the fact that I didn't even remember it. Uh, th this'll be our first D tier. First of many, I assure you. On March 26th, we got a Nintendo Direct Mini, and this is our first post poison mushroom direct here and it was probably one of the best ones we've had all year honestly it it gave us what the xenoblade 2 information and clubhouse games and all of those take two compilations got announced as well it was a pretty meaty nintendo direct mini people at the time like at the time they said wow this was meager you know because you know, we didn't know what Nintendo's lineup was, and later on we'd find out that they wouldn't even tell us in Nintendo Directs, but, you know, who can predict the future, right? Uh, upon introspection, I'd say this is probably one of the better ones we've had all year. I'd put it in the A tier. 
Skipping the rest of spring, we move all the way to June 17th, where we got Pokemon Presents, the very first Nintendo Direct that I publicly shared my opinion on with YouTube. How about that? And let me tell you folks, this was a pretty good Nintendo Direct, all things considered, or I guess Pokemon Presents, but you know, whatever, it counts. The announcement of new Pokemon Snap alone makes it an S tier and out. It, it, it's S tier. S tier, S tier, S tier. Can you tell this isn't scripted? S tier. The following week, on June 24th, we got another Pokemon Presents that they teased at the end of the first one, and it was dedicated to one game. Pokemon Unite. A free-to-play MOBA. For smartphones. Developed by Tencent. Yeah, I, I had a, a word or two to say about this in a video that's... The lip sync is off, as is the case with most of my videos, because I used to sync them up wearing Bluetooth headphones, but I digress. I've, I've said my piece on it. It was not a great direct, and it was antithetical to the sort of problem Pokemon has been facing in recent years. That is a D-tier direct, for sure. Actually, do we have an F-tier? I'm going to put that in F-tier. That is an F-tier direct. On July 20th, we got a mini Nintendo Direct focused on Nintendo's partners, a... Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase, if you will. This was the worst Direct of the year. Hands down, no competition. It had like four games there, and they were... I think I can remember them all, okay. They started off with DLC for Cadence of Hyrule, they showed a WWE game, and Rogue Company, and then Shin Megami Tensei 5, and that was all. That, that was literally it, and Shin Megami Tensei 5 was a teaser trailer thing. Oh, and also Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD, I guess. It, either way, those are two pretty good announcements, I suppose, but like, it's not new Pokemon Snap levels of hype, at least not for me. You know, Shin Megami Tensei fans, if this is one of your personal favorite directs of all year, good for you, more power to you. WWE fans, Rogue Company fans, if you exist, you know, <laughs> that was an F tier direct, easily. August 18th, we got Indie World Showcase. I think the thumbnail for my initial reaction to that sums it all up. It was just a whole lot of not for me, which is the case with most indie showcases and partner showcases. They, uh, they're, you know, they're highlighting smaller games, experimental games, games that don't have big budgets or cater to specific crowds, or, or literally cater to specific crowds, but not the general. They're not crowd pleasers, you know? There might be one or two things in there that you say, oh, that looks cool, but most of the time I feel like they aren't marketing to me. But, you know, that's what it is. Uh, I, I'd say C. C, C to your direct? Yeah, C. C. C, senor C. August 26th, we got another mini Nintendo Direct partner showcase. It, it was still bad. We, we got, like, Just Dance and... Duh, I guess. I only remember Just Dance because I actually made a joke with it. That's a D, yeah, D tier direct. It wasn't astronomically bad, and you know, nobody really had expectations for it. So it was bad, but it wasn't the worst thing in the world, D tier. September 3rd, we got the Super Mario Brothers 35th Anniversary Direct. The first, not the first, but like one of the only proper directs we actually got all year. And every announcement in it, or at least most, you know, the big announcements in it, were already known to us. Uh, you know, people leaked the, uh, the 3D All-Stars thing way in advance. Super Mario 35 was a surprise. I've enjoyed it for a long time. I still enjoy it, but, you know, not for long, because come March 31st, and that's a big, that, that takes points away from this Direct a lot, because it's sort of ushered in March 31st being this bad time, and it's only gotten worse, you know, <laughs> since then. But, uh, but Mario Kart Live Home Tour is also kind of neat. I didn't get it, obviously. It's not for me, but it lends me a little more hope that maybe the Mario Kart team is making ARMS 2 and not Mario Kart right away. Maybe, please, hopefully. Either way, this is an A-tier direct. It it's a good Nintendo direct, and it gave us something to, like, talk about, at least. On September 17th, we got yet another partner showcase, which was, so far, I mean, like, you know, third time's the charm, I guess, it was actually kind of substantial, and it was followed immediately by another Direct, a Monster Hunter-focused Direct. Which was, I think, the most interesting thing about it. Now, it was either this one or the one in August that also included uh, fitness, boxing, rhythm, and exercise. It's a Nintendo-developed and published title, and I remember, if whether it was this one or the last one, I remember pointing out in a video, hey, 
That means that this isn't just for, like, third parties or indies, like, developing partners. That's a Nintendo game, and they slipped it in here, you know? So what the heck, Nintendo? Why are you not putting your big announcements in these anymore? But I digress. These two Nintendo Directs, I'll say, I'll say they're both... Eh, you know what? Yeah, I'll say they're both C tier. They, they could be B tier, but like, I'm not the biggest Monster Hunter fan. I'm not the biggest fan of what they had. It was just, it was good. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good. October 28th, we got the last Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase of the year, as they called it. And you know what? It was still not great. <laughs> it had like Goose Game co-op and some other announcements here and there and you know some good sales I think that were related to it but but it was it was more it was more of the same there's nothing to get hyped over what tier would I put it in I gosh I don't know I think it gets credit for being the last one I'll I'll put it in C tier that's I think where it belongs I almost forgot to mention earlier in October we got Steve revealed for uh, for Smash Brothers that I guess that's not really a direct but like Sakurai Presents kind of- oh, and how did- how could I have forgotten about the ARMS Direct? For some reason, I was reading this off of the Nintendo Wiki's dedicated Direct archive page, and they didn't have Mr. Sakurai Presents Min Min or Steve in there. Those both belong in S tier, I say. They're hype announcements for- for me. For me, really. For me, Min Min was more hype than Steve was, and Steve was undeniably hype. So those both go in S tier. Just getting that out of the way right now. Uh, and then, did I already rank the one that was just recently, like, why I made this video? The, the, the Nindies showcase? If I did or if I didn't, C tier. Saying it now. The very last, absolute last Nintendo Direct for this year has not been released at time of recording this. It is the Sephiroth Mr. Sakurai Presents coming up on the 17th. It is currently the 15th while I'm recording this. I haven't seen it yet, but even if it's only Sephiroth stuff, I'm putting it in S tier. I I've got a bias, what can I say? So that's my list, I suppose. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I mean, I feel like there are gonna be a lot of people who disagree with me. But I mean, like, not by much. You know, just Pokemon fans and Fire Emblem fans and Monster Hunter fans and Animal Crossing fans. All sorts of people who are fans of things that I'm not really that big a fan of are gonna come in and have their biases shine. I I'm, a I'm a Smash Brothers fan, what can I say? I'm not like a Smash Brothers fan, Smash Brothers fan. No, I'm I'm a pretty big fan of Smash Brothers. But like from the from the design aspect, from the not the competitive or the who deserves what, but just from the Nintendo history and video game crossovers and yay! Woo -hoo if you liked this video, be sure to, you know, like it. Like if you like it, that's how you feel about it. But also clicking that little thumb liking it in YouTube lingo helps me out a lot as does subscribing to my channel. If you aren't already, please do that. I would be very thankful. I'd be even more thankful if you consider donating to my Patreon, where for as little as $1 a month, you can be credited at the end of my videos, and for up to $10 a month, you know, along with other perks that I detail on the website itself, you will be immortalized in your very own Talking Sock Sona, as I've coined it, who you are probably seeing march across the screen right now, or close to right now. Uh, either way, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you the next time I see you. In the new year, probably. Wow. Huh.